The best way to pass the high set writing test is to take a practice test. So let's go for it. Welcome to Purely Persistent. I'm Michelle. Now, before we begin the actual test, here are a few tips to help you remember as, as we go through it. First, review your grammar. Now with this writing test, we're going to be doing a lot of editing. And so it's really important to make sure that your grammar is up to speed. So check out some of these grammar videos that I have. The second, review the passage. The directions say to actually read the passage, but don't take the time to read it because it's not a comprehension test. It's not a reading test. So quickly review the passages and we'll do this together before you go straight to the questions. Next, shorter is sometimes better. When we're going through some of the questions, it will have you choose different, which one sounds the best. And not always, but a lot of the times, the answers that are a little bit more concise, the shorter ones, could be the answer. Next, practice, right? You need to practice several of these tests over and over just so that you really have it down. You have the wording down so that you can rock the test when the actual test comes. Now there is an essay that goes with this. So make sure that you apply the essay template that I teach you in several of my videos. This is a proven technique that all my students do and, and they tend to pass. So follow this technique. And most importantly, believe in yourself. You can do this. I believe in you. So let's go take this test. The test that we're going to be taking here is the high set free practice test 6A. So let's take a look here at the first passage. Now remember, we're not going to read the entire thing. Basically, we're just going to kind of survey it to sort of see what's going on before we go to the questions. So it says, a student is writing a letter to a school in Mexico to propose a cultural exchange program. Read through the draft, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so uh, it's coming from, it's a letter. It's coming from Ridgeview High School. Uh, it's going to a principal in Mexico. And it says, Dear Mr. Garcia, Jeremy Hunt, who graduated from our school last year, recently returned from Morelia. Okay, next paragraph. Since Jeremy's visit, we club members have been discussing different kinds of exchanges. Should you have any questions, please direct them. We hope your students will be as eager to have a video exchange. Yours truly, Marcella Ramirez. Okay, so you have a general idea of what's going on, but we didn't take the time to read the entire thing. Because remember, this is not a comprehension test. We're going to be looking at specific parts of the letter, and if we need to go back and read a whole paragraph or so, we will. But we definitely want to make sure that we're maximizing our time and not reading too much. Okay, so this first question here relates directly here to the introduction. And I have seen on several practice tests this exact question. So when it's an important letter and it's to someone specific, you actually end it with a colon okay so you say dear mr garcia colon okay this is something that's really important for you to know because there's a chance that if there's going to be a letter on your test it's probably going to have this question on it now letter d where it says dear sir that would be more like a like to your friend so you might say dear katie comma okay but a professional letter like this, you want to make sure that it has this Mr. or Mrs. whomever, and then the colon. Okay, number two here. We are going right here to number two. So I like to read it like this. I, I like to read the whole sentence before I make my decision. So it says, Jeremy Hunt, who graduated from our high school last year, recently returned from Morelia, where he visited your school as I guess you should already know. Hmm, should we keep it as is, or should we say uh, where he visited your school, a fact you know? Or C, where he visited your school, as I probably don't need to tell you. Or D, where he visited your school, 
as you probably know. So we need to decide which one of these sounds the best. You know, honestly, if you have to read it out loud, do so. Read it out loud so that you can hear what sounds the best and what doesn't. Now we know C is not the answer because C is pretty wordy, right? And honestly, even A is pretty, pretty wordy. And remember that tip I told you? You want to make sure it's not wordy. We want to make it concise and nice. So the answer here, if I eliminate two, I'm left with just B and D. And now I need, I need to just do my best guess. But the answer is actually D, as you probably know. Okay, number three here is basically just illustrating, is anything possessive or do things need to be capitalized? Okay, so first thing we have to do is Last week, he spoke to our school's international club. So we have to decide, does schools need an apostrophe S? So, and the answer is yes, because in this case, school is acting possessive, right? It's showing the school's ownership. So that eliminates B and C, which are both just plural. Now we have to decide, does international club need to be capitalized? So. A has international and club both capitalized, and D has international capitalized but not club. Now because this is an organization at our school or at their school, it would be, it would be capitalized. So the answer is A. Okay, number four, we're basically looking at two sentences that we're fusing together or maybe not fusing. So let's read the sentences. So starting right here with he. He described your school as being about the same size as ours, but having different courses. And he also thought it would be a great idea for our schools to initiate an exchange program. Okay, so uh, do we keep it as is? As is, red flag, it's a run on, yikes. We don't, we don't wanna have run ons. Okay. Uh, so should we have it as B, uh, the same size as ours, but having different courses, period. He thought it would be a good idea for our schools to initiate an exchange program. Okay, it, we have two complete sentences, uh, so that, that would work. Uh, let's look at C, uh, but having different courses, besides which he kind of wordy, don't you think? So C is not, not the answer. And D, but having different courses, mentioning he thought, well, that sounds awkward. So the answer here is B. So we're basically just taking a big run-on sentence, throwing a period in it. And if you need additional help with run-ons, definitely make sure that you check out my run-on sentence video so that you can easily and quickly get rid of any run-ons that you might have in a test like this or that you might have in your own writing. So number five here is basically writing conventions, which is what sounds the best when, when you're writing, okay? That's simply put. So number five, since Jeremy's visit, we club members have been discussing different kinds of exchanges. Okay, so we have we club members, sounds okay. Uh, B, us club members, us club members? That's a little awkward. We are all as a club discussing. We are all as a club discussing. A little wordy. Our club have been discussing. Now, club should say has, our club has. So that's not it either. So the answer is A. We club members have been discussing. Doesn't it sound kind of proper? We club members have been discussing. <laughs> Number six. Mrs. Trung, our club advisor, is really excited over this. Mrs. Trung is really excited concerning this. Hmm, concerning makes you think, oh, she's concerned about it, right? She's not concerned. Mrs. Trung is enthusiastic about, ooh, that's a good word. Mrs. Trung is so enthusiastic over. 
that like so is not necessary so is so not necessary <laughs> okay so really excited or enthusiastic about which would sound better in an essay definitely see she is enthusiastic about this idea okay number seven we're combining two sentences together so we have mrs chong our club advisor is really ex enthusiastic over this she is encouraging us to write to you so how could we combine those sentences together so a just leave it as is b uh mrs chung is enthusiastic about this idea encouraging us to write to you c mrs chung is enthusiastic about this idea and has encouraged us to write to you there we go that sounds that sounds better because she's enthusiastic about and she encouraged us. So, so that's that's looking pretty good. Or D, uh, Mrs. Strong, our club advisor, is enthusiastic about this idea. It was her that encouraged us to write to you. Well, that sounds kind of awkward. So the, the answer here is C, eight. Of course we would welcome any other ideas for the getting the getting for the getting of an exchange program going okay um, we would welcome any other ideas for starting an exchange program Ooh, that sounds nice we would welcome any other ideas for the starting up of an exchange program the starting up that sounds kind of weird too or D we would welcome any other ideas for how to get an exchange program going you know, this is an example of, you know, shorter, more concise, sounds better. So the answer is B. A question like number nine here is really common to have at the end of the passage. Basically, should we sort of reword anything? So it says the letter, this question refers to the letter as a whole. Which of the following changes, if any, would improve the organization of ideas in this letter? Okay, so, a says no change it's good the way it is so let's just kind of review so it says you know the beginning jeremy hunt who graduated from our high school last year uh, paragraph two since jeremy's visit we club members have been discussing different kinds of exchanges three should you have any questions please direct them to mrs strong four we hope your students will be as eager as we are okay so um there's one thing that i'm that i'm not liking at all so but let's take a look here it says B C and D are relating to paragraph 3 so make paragraph 3 the second paragraph of a letter so should you have any questions please direct them to mrs. trunk well usually the call to action of a letter is usually going to be at the end so we wouldn't want it to be right near the top so B is not it C make it the last paragraph of the letter perhaps or d omit, omit the letter no you need to have a call to action right there's a purpose behind this letter to you know get get our school and their school connected together so we, we don't want to omit it and so as i mentioned before a I mean, it's a little a little awkward we, we really need this here to go to go at the end paragraph three should should definitely be be the last paragraph with that call to action so that's really important for you to remember the call to action in a letter is at the very end so see the answer so now we're moving on to an entirely new text so let's start off in our same way and just kind of survey it to see what's going on okay the calculus wars dun 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 Okay, paragraph one, mathematics may seem like an impersonal subject. Two, Sir Isaac Newton is often considered the greatest scientist of all time. Three, Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz was a German philosopher who was a scientist. And four, in the case of Newton and Leibniz, men who knew one another. Okay, so it must be like a war, some sort of conflict between Newton and Leibniz. Which one have you heard of? That tells you who won, right? So let's take a look at number 10. In some sense, 
then it had to be so, and there is often more to their stories than just numbers and equations. That is extremely wordy, don't you think? So let's, let's not include that one. Yet, they certainly did exist. What is existing? Sometimes you have to like read the sentence above it. So uh, particularly with, with the most interesting mathematicians, remembering that they were, there were actual people behind it can be hard. Yet, they certainly did exist. And there is often more to their stories than just numbers and equations. Yeah, I think that's, you know, nice and concise. But let's look at C and D. As a result, this has to be true. There has to be people behind it. That's awkward. D. Specifically, yet there have always been, and there is often more to their stories than just numbers. So, so the answer here is, is going to be B. It's just really the most concise. It makes the sentence make the most sense. Okay, so again, read out loud if you need to. I feel like a lot of these ones can be, can be a little bit tricky. You know, uh, what, what words sound the best? You know, the grammar, if you know your grammar, it's really easy to eliminate the ones that have improper grammar. But the ones that are more writing conventions and what sounds the best can be a little bit more challenging. So uh, do give yourself a break though, because you only have to get like half of them right to pass the test. So number 11, we have to decide, is this an important sentence that we need or not? So let's start by reading the sentence right above it, right here with, with number 10, and then we'll decide whether or not sentence 11 is necessary. So in some sense then, uh, and there is often more to their stories than just numbers and equations. Sometimes stuff like this can be really hard to believe. Okay, stuff is not a good word to use in an essay, okay? So don't use the word stuff in your essay. You know, use a more complex word. Okay, or B, I'm pretty sure that this is one of the truly best of them. Okay, again, you know, like you might say things like that, but don't write things like that. And so we don't want the author to write things like that either. Here's one that you shouldn't be surprised if you haven't heard of. Okay, again, that's not really professional writing, so let's not do that. So should we get rid of it? Should we delete it? It's best without it. Yes, delete that sentence. It just sort of takes it away. It makes it like a professional sounding essay, and then it just like <laughs> makes it not professional. So let's just delete it. It's not necessary. Okay, let's take a look at number 12. Defining the laws of motion and universal gravitation up until the 20th century, he provided the framework for physics. Okay, that, you know, it's not too bad. Uh, but let's see if we can word it in a, in a better way. Up until the 20th century, defining laws of motion and universal gravitation, he provided the framework for physics. Okay, so uh, this, we need to have the he before before the rest of it. So so B is B is not not the answer. This is called language facility. Uh, C. By defining the laws of motion and universal gravitation. Okay. He provided the framework for physics up until the 20th century. Okay? It's sounding okay. Or D. He provided the framework for physics by defining laws of motion and universal gravitation up until the 20th century. So, you know, we're, ones like this, uh, I so the answer, the answer is C. But I would say ones like this, you know, just read it out loud if you need to, so that you can hear what you're, hear how it says, and then just try to do the ones that's worded the best. This, you know, it's all saying the same thing. It's just rewording parts, parts of this sentence. And, uh, there, there's a lot to this uh, grammatically, but I'm not really going to go over it because, you know, just pick which one you think is the best. Okay, 13. So um, Leibniz was a German philosopher who was a scientist, made inventions, a lawyer, and a mathematician. 
Okay, so this is what we like to call parallel structure. So when you have a sentence, you want to make sure that it's fairly consistent. When, when you have a list, you want to make sure that everything in, in the basic list like this is, is very consistent. So notice here how in A, it says who was a scientist, made inventions, you know, it, it just it is not as consistent. We want it to be do, 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 do. So did, look at B, did science inventing okay did is a horrible word let's not let's not do did and a like I said it doesn't doesn't flow uh, C scientist inventor lawyer and mathematician that's giving a you know it's a it's a noun for each one of them he was this 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 and this right it makes a lot of sense so D is pretty similar but notice here how it said practiced practiced is going to be a verb, so it goes verb, noun. So it goes noun, noun, verb, noun, and noun. So again, that doesn't have the consistency, whereas C, noun, 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 and noun. <laughs> okay, so C is the answer. Okay, with number 14 here, it's time to get out your spelling. Now, you, you know, can't, I mean, you can study spelling. I would study spelling for your writing, not necessarily for for this, okay? This, you, you don't know what words you're going to have. You just just sort of do your best here, okay? So, which words? Uh, A is they're all correct. B is anticipate. C, contemporary. D, originator. So are any of those words misspelled? No, they're actually all spelled correctly. And when you take the actual high set test, it will be worded a little bit differently than this. It'll say like, which of the following words was misspelled and is now spelled correctly? Or which of the following words was correctly spelled and then misspelled? So it's all of them are changed from what is in the actual passage. So it's just a little bit different than how this one is worded. So 15. The writer wants to add an introductory sentence to paragraph four. Which of the following would be the best choice? So let's kind of read what this paragraph is about. So in this case, Newton and Leibniz, man who knew one another and were among the greatest geniuses in history, waged the calculus wars. Their tactics included name calling, publishing attacks on each other's honesty and allowing their allies to do more of the same. Okay, so what would be a good little transition the paragraph right before this was just about Leibniz, okay? So A, their approaches to calculus were somewhat different and Leibniz developed a notion that is still used today. Well, we're talking about a war here. We're not talking about like just Leibniz, right? B, around the same time, Siki Tozaku or Kiki Kawa, you know, my Japanese names are a little off. Um, was independently doing related work. We don't need to. We don't need to bring him in. You know, good. Good for him. Way to, way to go. But we need to stick with just these two guys, right? See, how common is it for contemporaries to separately make the same discovery or invention? Guys, we're talking about the calculus wars, right? Okay, are this. Um, are there any effects when two people invent the same thing at about the same time? Hmm. In this case, Newton and Leibniz, da 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 da. So D is the answer. It's a really nice little introduction into the rest of our paragraph here. Okay, number 16. Let's start right here with four and read that whole sentence. For example, Leibniz wrote an unsigned review of works by Newton. And in the unsigned review, which he wrote, Leibniz compared Newton to a known mathematical plagiarist. Ooh, you know, there is a war, right? Uh, it's kind of wordy, right? There, there's a lot to it. So could we say, um, he wrote an unsigned review of works by Newton in which there is a comparison by Leibniz of Newton. That's, that's, you know, that's really wordy too. Both, both very wordy. Okay, these ones are a little shorter, right? So, um, Leibniz wrote an unsigned review of Newton, of works by Newton, in which he compared him, okay, we've got an issue, him, 
right? Who is him? Is him Leibniz or is him Newton? Uh, you know, is he comparing himself to the mathematical plagiarist? Who is he comparing? So, so that's not the answer. And D, for which Leibniz wrote an unsigned review of works by Newton in which he compared Newton to, an, to a known mathematical plagiarist. Bingo, it makes sense. Once you finish the questions, or maybe at the start, you will see an essay. The essay represents about half of the test, okay? At the time of the filming of this video, there are 60 questions and one essay, and you get two hours to do this. So definitely make sure that you manage your time so that you have enough time to write the essay. And check out all of these videos that I have on how to pass the high set essay. So just remember to practice and you've got to believe in yourself, okay? I think that a lot of times this essay can give people anxiety, but follow the techniques that I've provided with you and believe in yourself and be purely persistent. If anyone hasn't told you today, you are enough and you are so important in this world. Peace.